I tried filming this video outside, but was unable to because the wind was too strong and my phone ran out of charge um, and I'm filming with that right now. So yeah, I'm sorry about that and I'm gonna take off my sunglasses as well because I'll fly a bit better than inside. Anyway, so today is a video which I've been wanting to make for a really long time and that is to talk about all of my chainsaw gear. Actually, I'm missing one thing, these. So yeah, today I'm gonna be giving you a full in-depth look on all of my logging slash chainsaw gear. Um, so there's quite a bit here, as you can see. Um, this is all kinds of stuff which I've accumulated over the past three years or so. Um, but let's get one thing straight here. I am not a real logger, at least not yet. Uh, I just happen to live on a farm, which has a lot of forests and a lot of acres of forest. Wooded areas, that's the word. Um, and I enjoy um, doing logging. I have enjoyed it since we moved here. I really like the culture. I really like the te techniques of um, doing stuff. And then I also really like the gear. And this is all of my gear, which I've accumulated over the past three years or so. So starting off, of course, with the saw. So what is the saw? which I have um, decided to use for my personal logging adventures. Well, that would be this beast. So this right here, let me move this aside. So this right here is the Steel MS-271. Um, so this is a 50cc saw. It is not a professional saw though. A uh, professional saw would have more metal, saw on it would have a better power to weight ratio, more horsepower, uh, would have more metal, saw on it instead of plastics, um, you know, uh, stuff like uh, compression releases, um, better gunning sights, things of that nature. So this is not a professional saw, this is more of the prosumer saw, I guess, um, but it's still a pretty, it, it's still a pretty good powerhouse, I mean, I believe this thing um, I don't remember exactly how many horsepower this thing has, but again, it's a 50cc saw, so you can kind of count it from there. Or then you can just check out the links in the video description where you can find the links to all this stuff. Um, I have a 16 inch bar on this, and this I believe so. This is a 35 centimeter bar, so is that 16 inches? I am not sure. Jesus, I'm running out of space. But yeah, and it's one of the light. Uh, bars is a steel light or four bar bar which um, they have these I guess sort of new bars out um, which are different to the normal steel bars um, what they have done basically is they have gotten rid of the middle um, or carved out the middle of the bar and then replaced the middle parts of the bar with some is it like a composite material or whatever uh, basically to make the sauce bar more lighter so uh, yeah, and of course when the lighter the bar, the lighter the saw. Um, and yeah, so I mean, it's relatively good. It's not too heavy. You can run around with this pretty well and you're not going to get exhausted immediately. Um, so yeah, really like it. So the steel MS-271. I guess next up, helmets. So of course you got to have a helmet when you're in the forest. My one is this. Um, it's one of your like basic uh, loggers helmets which you can find in any logging store. A lot of people don't like these helmets with the visors and the uh, built-in earmuffs. Personally, I've never had any problems with this helmet. I don't use the visor a whole lot. Usually I use safety glasses or sunglasses. But it's good whenever you're working in a deep, very brushy area. So there's no sticks and stuff like that hitting you in the face every five minutes. Uh, so it's very nice for that. And again, it has the built-in earmuffs. I've never really had any problems with this. Uh, even just having the visor off like this and doing um, doing stuff. I mean, it, it doesn't actually annoy me that much, to be honest. So yeah, full plastic helmet, uh, as to be expected. And yeah, very nice helmet. So it's a Nord Chefing helmet. There you go. Chainsaw chaps, these are steel. I don't know what exact Class 1, still Class 1, I believe that's the name of these. Um, so yeah, they look like this. Um, 
yeah, I used to use chainsaw pants. Before I got these, I had chainsaw pants, and they're over there right now. Um, and those were great, but the problem with that, with those are, they are so annoying to put on because you have to take off your shirt if you don't want to put it over your shirt. You need to take off your shirt. You need to take off your shoes, throw them on you, then put all that stuff back, and then you can put on your belts and stuff like that, and then go to the forest. So it's so annoying to always have to uh, take off stuff and put it back on. And it just there's been a bunch of projects which I've just not done basically for the fact that I don't really feel like putting on my uh, chainsaw pants. Uh, and then also they switch you really badly. They switch you really bad. When we were doing the logging down in the river this year, uh, earlier this summer, uh, seriously, like the pants which I was wearing underneath there, yes, I probably shouldn't have been wearing any pants underneath there. I should have worn shorts. Uh, but nonetheless, the pants which I was wearing underneath there, they were completely soaked when I took them, when I took off my pants and I had to put them straight into the laundry and then, Jesus Christ. Anyway, so yeah, these are my chainsaw chaps and these are much better than the chainsaw pants because basically it's just, if you want to put them on, you just do this. You can find it. There, you just clip it on and it's there. You're ready to go, which is very nice. Uh, of course, they have a bunch, bunch of other clips down here as well. Um, usually, I only put on the top and the bottom clips. I don't usually put on all these other clips, basically, because I don't see the need to do that. And I just, uh, it becomes more, it's less, uh, the more clips you put on, um, the less movable you become in these, I guess. It's much harder to sit down in these then, and it's much harder. Alright, so I basically just put on the bottom and the top clips and call it good, so yeah. Of course, every logger has a folders belt. In the beginning, I didn't use a folders belt when I was still a noob. But now when I've gotten, I guess, a little bit more experience and then I have researched this a bunch. Um, I can comfortably say that I have a folders belt, which I'm pretty happy with. Um, so let's talk about what I have here. So first of all, the belt itself. This is a uh, US World War II style of pistol belt. As you can see right there. It's very nice because it has the holes, the rivet holes in it. So you can actually attach stuff like the longer tape on there and things of that nature. And seeing as it is, a, it is designed for war, um, it's a very sturdy belt. Um, so yeah, it's very nice. Uh, it has this very simple clip on there, which you just clip on. I don't know if I can show you. It's very interesting, but it's also really easy. So you have this clip here, put it like that, and there you go. And it holds surprisingly well. Um, so on the belt, I have a bunch of different things. Let's start from... What should, I, what should I say? Let's start off from... Let's start off from left to right, like we usually do. So, we got my folders, uh, or my loggers tape right here. It's a steel loggers tape measurer. Um, it is a, I believe it's a, it's a 25 meter loggers tape, so very nice. Um, this is very good when you're cutting dimensional lumber and stuff like that, uh, because you don't know how big the sawmill wants it, or um, it's also good when you're, uh, doing firewood which I use it mostly for because we usually have one size of firewood and we don't really like to make a whole bunch of different sizes. It's very nice to be able to get the exact measurement every time. Um, so yeah, really like this thing. Um, it's a little he on the heavier side but I I like it that it's heavier because that usually means that it's more sturdier. Like if you look at the um, Husky loggers tape measurer that thing is lighter, but it's almost completely made out of plastic, and that really turned me away from it, and especially considering the price tag of it. It's about the same price as this, but it's made out of plastics and stuff like that, and I don't really like it. So, next up is something which you don't usually see on uh, in Finnish, Finnish logging, and that is that I'm carrying an axe. So why do I carry an axe? Well, whenever you're falling big trees, um, no, well, not always, but a lot of times you need to use wedges, and 
of course you could use pounders and stuff like that but i just i just find it more easier to just use just a small little forest axe because this is very good you can get rid of branches with this if you're if you want more space to fill something you can use this as a pounder to pound in wedges so that's why i carry an axe uh, so this is the husky axe I got this at the same time as my loggers tape. Um, as you can see, it has a bit of damage right there. I hit it with the saw once, unfortunately. Um, but very nice handle on there. Um, and I've used it quite, how would I say it? I've used this quite, God, mind blank. I'm using this quite a bit and uh, pretty heavily. heavily. I guess, or Olen rääkännyt tätä työkalua, sanotaanko nyt näin. So, it has, and because I've used it a lot and it's gotten beat up and run, it, it, it has held up surprisingly well, that's what I'm trying to say, and I really like it. And I keep it very sharp as well, which is important. Got my gloves hanging off here, of course, those are great whenever you're uh, living a tree. Um, especially a pine or a fir tree where you have all those fir and pine needles. These are very great, so then when you grab them and move them aside, uh, your fingers don't get a bunch of pine needles stuck into them. So yeah, these are very nice for that. Still, again, and then uh, they're attached to this little clip onto the belt. So yeah, so I have everything on me. That's something about which you can tell I have every, all the essential stuff I have on my folder's belt. I have a little pouch here, you can, I, I usually have a bunch of stuff here, sometimes I have some medical stuff here, actually most of the time I have some medical stuff in here, sometimes I have some stuff, some other stuff, um, but yeah, this is very nice, I can keep whatever I want in here, um, it's pretty small I guess, but it's, but everything that I need to, need it to hold, it holds, so, yeah, and then of course, your chainsaw tool, very important, have it on this little clip, so I can just very easily clip it off and then when I don't need it anymore, then I can just really easily, if it will go back. Of course, when I'm trying to do this for the camera, it doesn't want to go back there. Very easily goes back on this little lanyard thing right here. So yeah, that's my folders belt. Um, yeah, I really like it. It's a very nice folders belt. Um, before I've used a bunch of different folders belts, I've used a uh, webbed belt before, I've used a leather belt and just recently I switched over to this uh, webbed um, pistol belt, I guess. And I, this is my favorite one up until now, so yeah. This is a bag which some people have been asking me about, so I usually carry this combination of two bags almost every time when I'm chainsawing. Well, I guess, no, every time when I'm out chainsawing. I always carry this. So this is pretty self-explanatory. It's a first aid kit. Very important when you're doing chainsaw work because chainsaws, if you get hurt by them, you usually get hurt by them quite badly. So it's very important to have a proper first aid kit with all the essential stuff. Then inside of this other pouch, this basically has more, um, I guess, spare stuff and uh, it's basically everything which I uh, may need on the job, but don't want to carry on my, uh, person at all times. So I have a wedge in here. These are very great when you're filling bigger trees. Wedges are very good. So I have one in here for now. Um, got some oil right here um, for my chain and bar. And uh, this is not proper chain and bar oil, but it's better than nothing. If you run out of uh, chain and bar oil, uh, or if any of us run out of chain and bar oil, then I'll have this in here. It's not the best and it's not ideal, but it's better than running it, it's better than nothing, I guess. Um, then I got a secondary scrunch tool in here, just in case if I lose my main one. This is a bigger one, actually. This is the one which came with my uh, saw. And yeah, this is another thing which I have in here. So yeah, that's very important. Then I got my a flat file, if I need to uh, file my depth gauges. I got my main round file to file my teeth, the teeth on the saw, so yeah. Uh, this is a Oregon, if you're wondering. Uh, is that it? Am I missing something? I don't think I'm missing anything. Oh yeah, I am. So, then I also have a spare, a couple spare knots and bolts in here. Uh, basically, if I lose one of the uh, log knots, one of the 
uh, bar nuts on my saw, then I can just replace them with one of those. They, they are smaller ones, which is not ideal again, but again, it's better than nothing. It's better than running it just with one bar nut. Um, because I've heard stories about people losing both of their bar nuts on their saws and then they're you're basically out of commission. And that's also why it's important to also carry your scrunch tool with you at all times because of, I've also heard stories about people it will we all know that your chain can jump off your bar if it's not tightened pro if your uh, chain hasn't been tightened properly and then if that happens and you don't have your scrunch tool or any tool to open your bar nuts you're ba it's basically game over until uh, you can get that open which usually if you have don't have one you one that usually means that you have to go to your shop and that's going to add hours onto your already busy schedule so i keep two uh, scrunch tools as well then I have a secondary folders belt, but this is technically not a folders belt, this is a limbing belt, which I like to call it. Um, and the only thing which this has currently, this is a belt, by the way, this is a belt which I'm building on right now, I'm not done with it. Uh, but the plan is to add a folder, a secondary folders tape measure on there, but currently what I have here is basically the scrapler, and this is very good to move logs around. Um, this usually gets carried, this belt setup usually gets carried by my dad. Because usually it's me who's doing all the falling and the bucking, and then he's usually doing all the limbing and moving all the branches, uh, moving all the branches and logs around. So basically, he's wearing this belt. It's a nice uh, pleather or fake leather belt. Um, nothing very robust, but it gets the job done. And then this little grappler right here, which is very nice. So yeah. That's something which he carries usually, but I just decided to show it, show you it here because sometimes I do in fact wear that. And then finally, my boots. So my boots are um, these ones. I'm not actually sure what brand these are, um, but of course, if you're doing heavy logging, you want to wear some proper nice boots. And these are the ones which I've used for a really long time now. As you can see, they have completely been sun faded and stuff like that. Um, these are actually hand-me-downs, so I didn't buy these, um, so that's why they are so sun faded. But they have steel toes on them, they have a very strong uh, rubber uh, in, the, in the front here, which should, and I believe there should be some sort of um, the same fibers in here as on your chainsaw chap. So if you hit your saw right here, it shouldn't tear it up and uh, cut off your, cut off your uh, foot. Um, so yeah. These are very great. It's very good to wear proper boots when you're doing chainsawing or any sort of logging work in general. Um, I would say from safety gear, although these are important, they're the least important. I believe you should always have a helmet on and you should always have um, chaps on. But these ones you could probably survive without, but I wouldn't recommend it. I wouldn't recommend it. So. Don't quote me on that, I guess. But I usually wear these almost every time when I'm doing some sort of sawyer work. It's very rare that I'll just wear normal safety toe shoes or anything like that when I'm using my chainsaw. Um, so uh, it, it's pretty... I use these quite a bit, I guess. So yeah, these are the ones... Um, again, I don't remember the brand on these, but basically steel has a very similar look to these. Are these actually steels? These could actually be steels. There's something on the inside. Hold on, let me see here. Yeah, steel has very similar boots to these. Um, but if you want a really good boot, um, I would recommend buying some handmade boots, I believe. I don't think Grizzly Peak Enterprises makes boots, but just I'll, I'll put some links in the video description where you can find some really good boots. But if you just want to find some commercial boots which are going to do the trick, then these ones are steel boots will do the trick just fine. So yeah, that's all of my chainsaw gear. Anyway, hopefully you all enjoyed this video. If you did, leave a like, and I'll see you all in the next one. Goodbye.